Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I Don't Work Here Lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled The Karen and the Boss. First, a background info. I'm 55 male, autistic Asperger's and sufferers with Tourette's when hyper-excited or stressed out. I own a graphic design operation and have a gorgeous Downs teenager in the front of the shop which I adore and treats like a daughter. The front of the shop is a little too tight for my power chair which is why I always use the rear entrance. Now to the story, I showed up a little late for an interview with a prospective manager and as I pull into the disabled area outside the shop a woman come up to me demanding why I was parked in the disabled bay as clearly I wasn't disabled, so I pulled out the blue badge and put it in the window and ignored her silly rant. It's fake it's obviously a fake, I'm reporting you to the police. Fine go ahead I'll wait here, I smiled sweetly to her. Soon enough the police arrived and asked what the commotion was about Karen told them I was blatantly disregarding the laws and parking in the disabled bay. I asked the nice officer if I can exit my vehicle and explain. I pressed the button on my console and the boot popped open then, I began to drive my power chair up the back and down the ramp. Karen's jaw dropped so far she almost had to retrieve it from the pavement. Anything else? The nice officer asked the Karen, before walking away. Now the juicy bit begins. I drive my chair around the corner and into the rear of the shop as per usual and set up ready for the interview, leaving a red-faced Karen spluttering, red-faced with the officer. Soon after I settled down I hear the shop door open and a customer arrived. Janet, I can you welcome the person with the usual greeting. Hello and welcome to a shop name. Please feel free to look around, and if you need anything, feel free to ask and I will endeavor to be of service. Not another ducking one was screeched. You should all be aborted and less of a burden to the country. Obviously Janet was taken aback and sputtered out and excuse me. You are all the ducking same, no brain and all drain. I'm here for the interview and the first thing I'm going to do is fire your useless arse and get someone competent in instead. Now go and get your boss as some cunt buffin caused me to be late. By then I had heard enough and called out to Janet to show the person through I could hear her barge past her and arrive at my office. The look on her face when the cunt buffin as she so eloquently spoke of was the interviewer, smiling sweetly enough to give her a cavity. I waited until the color finished draining out of her before letting her know how I felt about her. Hello miss or missus, please take a seat, I hear you have a great resume and are exceptional at managing a business and customer service, now please tell me who the duck do you think you are coming over all high and mighty. Yes I did hear you berating Janet and telling her she was going to be replaced as soon as you get hired well done genius, you can get the first prize which is absolutely ducking nothing now get out, and if I see you in here, then I will not be able to restrain myself. But but but, no ducking buts get out, or you will be arrested for trespassing. I think she broke the land speed record exiting my establishment, ah oh, well maybe the next applicant would suit. The next story is titled I do work here, and somewhere else. This happened in 1994, when my first wife was driving us broke. I got a part-time job at the Orange Home Improvement Store. I asked to be put in the paint department, and they obliged me. One day a couple in their late 20s, early 30s came in. They said they were having problems with mold in their bathroom. They had an old house. I advised them to use an exterior gloss or semi-gloss paint, because an exterior paint has a milder side, but interior paints don't. Note, this was before kitchen and bath enamels. The husband told me that interior paints do have a milder side. I thought this guy might know a little about paint, so I explained that interior paints have a preservative, which keeps the water-based paints from spoiling the can, but not a milder side. He still insisted that interior paints have a milder side. He grabbed a can of interior paint, pointed to the ingredients list and said C. Ammonia. That's a milder side. I calmly replied that the ammonia is in there to adjust pH and evaporates before the paint dries. I cut short his reply which started with you can't tell me. I held up my finger and said actually, I can tell you. This is my part-time job. Here is my full-time job. I pulled out my business card. It read my name. Senior Research Chemist, Coatings Laboratory, Major Chemical Company. I just remember his wife speaking up, saying to her husband, You think you know so goddamned much. The next story is titled Yes I'm in Charge. This is my first time posting, 
and it's about an incident that happened when I had turned 27 to 28 and was part of an electrician apprenticeship program through my local of the IBU, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, and was entering my fifth year of the five-year program, basically making me the equivalent of a high school senior. In July of that year I was working with one of the largest electrical contractors in my city and was assigned to work at one of their contracts for one of the local slash largest oil refineries at one of the multiple plants they had in area. In July the apprenticeship starting sending out what were unindentured apprentices who had not yet started classes but were working to see if they would qualify for the program and had a lot of new faces arriving daily. Since I was a senior apprentice I was placed in charge of the apprentices that were part of the wire pull crew that did multiple 1000 plus foot wire pulls daily to help complete the new process unit we had been assigned to do the electrical construction on. As we made our way up the many platforms and ladders, at least 40 FT into the pipe rack and into the cable tray that supported the cables and wires, I would pass out position assignments based on skill levels. After two pulls we all got down to take our morning break. I noticed a new face amongst the crowd hanging around our little break area, where we had our toolboxes slash gang boxes slash lunch boxes. I saw one guy sitting on top of my lunchbox slash square ice chest. I approached him and said, hey buddy I guess you didn't notice the name written all over the lunchbox you're sitting on. Who gave you permission to sit on my lunchbox? The new guy stood up and looked up at me being a few inches shorter than me but also looking to be in his mid 40s. You can't tell me where to sit and not sit who put you in charge. At that moment the younger guy, he was talking to step between us and lead him away. After the union mandated 15 minute break, me and my crew were gathered around the wire, pull foreman little blueprint shack to get ready for the next five pulls they had planned. At that time a few of the new faces show up lead by the union steward who introduces them to the foreman as we broke up to go to our assigned locations. As usual I was at the front of the pull, lifting the wire up from the ground level. Over the walkie-talkie radio, I heard a LOT of chatter and felt the wire being jerked from behind me despite having a seasoned crew working. Multiple calls on the walkie-talkie demanding whoever is pulling and jerking the wire to get in rhythm and not pull so forcefully since we were at that moment pulling data wire that had fiber optics inside which could be damaged. After the pull and tied down of the wire I rushed down my platform to the ground after my foreman called us down the radios. At this point I am livid and seeing red. I finally get to the bottom with my pull partner next to me trying to calm me down. I stop when I see my foreman yelling at the same guy who sat on my lunchbox. Are you some kind of idiot? We might have to do the entire pull all over again because of you and your pulling of the wire despite nasty telling you over radio to stop jerking the wire and to stay with the pull count of 1, 2, 3 pull. The guy looks down at our barely 5, 4 foreman and looks like he is going to punch him. I proceeded to run up and stand at my full 5'11 height between him and my foreman when the a-hole opens his mouth. Get the hell out of the way this is between me and him. Who the hell at exclamation, were you anyway to act like some big shot? I calmly stood there and my foreman as cool as a cucumber goes, he's actually your boss, the one in charge of the wire pull, and you just broke his perfect pull record of 400 pulls and no issues a-hole, my boss? He can't be, he is just a kid probably barely 21, and he is telling me what to do? Me? Yeah, that's right I quote Tem your boss, old man. Because I'm a 28-year-old fifth-year apprentice and you're over 40 barely entering the program, I'm also your senior in the union roles. That's why I make the max $25 an hour to your $12 an hour, because I have more time on my electrical license than you do. He stood there with the realization that he was up the creek without a paddle because he thought since he was older that he would be placed in charge of things. The union steward showed up and stood before him between the two of us then turned to me and asked, Nasty what's going on here? The look of realization on the new guy's face got even wider and he actually got pale when he realized the name on the lunchbox over the radio and the one the foreman mentioned were all me. As I explained the situation and how the new guy had basically ruined at $100 per foot 1000 foot wire pull, the new guy turned even paler when he did the mental math and I mentioned $100,000 cost of that ruined pull. The union steward looks at him then and me then at him and asks me directly, well nasty, you are in charge of this crew, when in the air so what do you want to do with him? Move him to another crew? A different plant. Fire him since he is not officially in the program yet. The new guy almost looks like he wants to faint as he looks in my angry eyes, silently pleading to not fire him. Start the termination proceedings if chaps, chapero or shorty. The nickname we had for foreman agrees with me since he is a financial and safety liability. 
since it's obvious he can't control his anger let alone listen to instruction. My foreman looks at the steward with a gleam of joy in his eye, I want him gone, not from the refinery but the company and the local. The next story is titled Oh, I thought you were just a bathroom person. When I was 18, I started working in a coffee shop. It was terrifying. I hadn't done anything like it before, and most of my co-workers did not do much to hide their annoyance of the new girl who was still learning the ropes. A couple months after I got hired, I heard they were finally hiring someone new. I knew nothing about them, but was very relieved I wouldn't be the newest employee anymore. There was only one bathroom that was shared by staff and customers, and the public had to awkwardly walk behind an area of the counter and into the back of the store. This was where we kept a large selection of coffee beans sold for home use, and was usually where new employees would start out. When I came in for my shift, the new hire was behind the counter bagging beans or something. He was a bit younger than me, and when I walked by him to get to the back, we greeted each other with cheerful customer service smiles. I had no interest in being on the floor even for an extra minute or two before my shift started and figured we'd have a more complete introduction when I clocked in. Before long I had to re-emerge to the floor and first thing I logged into my drawer next to the new hires. When he saw me wearing an apron and at a register, he looked at me with a surprised but still cheery expression and proclaimed, oh, I thought you were just a bathroom person. I explained that no, I work here too, and from there we more sufficiently introduced ourselves and started chatting as we had time to. From the get-go we got along pretty well and realized that we had a surprising amount of shared interests. His natural friendliness made me feel more at ease than I had since I started, and I enjoyed showing him the ropes and learning the more advanced things alongside him. Soon enough our shifts together were filled with laughter and dumb ongoing jokes and boy talk, and then our work friendship became a very real friendship. It's been 15 years since then, and he's still one of my best friends and favorite people in the world. We've seen each other through huge life changes and heartbreaks, and he can spend a year as roommates. At some point we became family, and even when we're both horrible at keeping in touch I never feel like we truly drift apart. I'm getting married next year, and I'm excited to have him as my bride's Jude. Every so often I jokingly give him crap about the fact that his first words to me were calling me just a bathroom person. I know most of the posts here are about annoying customers, but I thought I'd share a story about someone confusing me as a customer that ended up being a really important moment in my life. The next story is titled I'm Homeless. So I work at a Starbucks right next to a car wash, and they're both located pretty close to the highway. My partner works at the car wash next to the Starbucks and I got a job at the Starbucks since we have to share a car at the moment. Many days I'm early to work because there's no sense in taking him to work and driving home only to go right back. I was there about an hour and a half early this day because I had already run the errands I needed to for the day while he was at work. I had gotten up early and hadn't been able to sleep due to my wrist hurting due to carpal tunnel. This is important for later, so here I am, sleep deprived in my already covered in sugar due to working at Starbucks jacket, my bag beside me with a bunch of art supplies that I carry around, my apron inside the bag, a dirty shirt that I had thrown on and a depressed look on my face. I also wore a hat, black beanie, every day to work so today was no different. I realized with my wrist brace I couldn't draw and my phone was about to die so I'd be bored for another hour and a half or so. I sit there with my bag beside me and nothing to do for about 4-5 to five minutes before I hear someone say excuse me and tap me on the shoulder. I turn around and a Santa Claus looking man, not dressed that way just the white slash gray beard and all that, was standing there. The conversation proceeded to go as followed. SC. Sorry, have you eaten? Me? Oa? Uh, yeah. Hadn't but I get a free food item every day so I was going to anyway. SC. Oh you have. Ah uh, well anyway I wanted to give you this, get yourself a coffee. He says with a small laugh and hands me $6 cause Starbucks is expensive app. Me. Aw oh, thanks so much. More from that's how I acted when we got tips until he walked away. I then realized I was just given 6 bucks to eat slash drink from a random guy. From his perspective I looked like a young, depressed homeless feminine teen on the side of the highway even though I was sitting in my place of work. The next story is titled Racist Against the Owner. The cast, me, EJ entitled jerk, and his important son. I work at a popular high-priced restaurant, and we get new employees often, but the owner who was also the general manager hired some new faces, and he put me in charge of them. 
I'm not a manager, and the actual managers that were working with me made it clear that they were putting the responsibility of EJ onto me. Immediately, I didn't like this EJ. He was unprofessional and rude, but when he found out he was older than me, all respect went out the window. I'm a rather short, chunky girl, and he belittled me on my weight as well as my age. EJ was also racist and homophobic to me as well, and let other staff and guests know his opinions very aggressively. On to why he was fired, the owner of restaurant next door is friends with the owner of the restaurant I work at. They are business partners and have corporate tires with each other. This is where his comes in. This is the son of the owner next door, is his father and my general manager are on a poster in the back room. The family has owned restaurants for years. I don't know the race, but I know they are from overseas. I don't know where exactly, but I'm assuming Israel. Anyway, they have a thick accent, and sometimes it's hard to understand them the first try. Is walked in, and I had a difficult time understanding his accent, and after a few minutes of trying to understand each other, we got his order in. EJ got annoyed listening to my conversation and started making comments like, learn English, and mumbling while making ugh sounds. Is heard this and layer on his accent making it even harder and playing it up while asking EJ questions about our food. EJ was noticeably pissed off and started yelling racist and anti-immigrant things at his. He ended his rant with, if I was the owner I'd ban all towel heads like you, is perked up and in almost perfect English with little detectable accents said, I am the owner EJ went off again claiming how he was lying until he realized as was one of the co-owners. You would expect an apology, right? One last ditch effort to save your job. Not from EJ, he then claimed that it wasn't fair for his to be a co-owner because it was taking away a job from Americans. His smiled very big and asked me to write a witness report while he called my general manager and his dad. The next day EJ was gone and I hopefully never have to deal with him again. The next story is titled, What Grade Are You In? I'm the teacher. So I'm 23F at the time, not a very tall person, 5'3", but I'm very curvy and have not ever had the issue of being mistaken as a child before but I do have a baby face and get somebody younger than older. This happened as a couple of years back. I was taking a break between undergrad and grad school and had decided to teach for a year abroad. I would taught for a year in the States already. So when I got an opportunity to go abroad and continue teaching, I jumped at the chance. I decided to stay with my aunt and uncles for the summer between graduation and flying to Spain. My uncle worked part-time as a substitute school supervisor for the local district so most of the kids in the neighborhood early recognized him. One day, when he wasn't on call, we took a trip to the community pool because it gets hot af in my hometown, 115 deg f slash 45 deg c, and the AC just wasn't cutting it. We're treading water in the deep end, five, so my uncle can stand with his head above water. Me, less so. I'm treading water, but basically you can only see me from the chin up. A family enters the pool and the kids all jump right in the pool. One of the kids, 12 ISHY slash OM, recognizes my uncle and comes over to join us. He says hi, introduces me as his niece, and we start making small talk. Is he enjoying his summer? What grade is he starting? Which middle school is he going to? Etc. Etc. Well, I've apparently piqued this kid's interest, and he starts boasting about staying middle school, year 6-8 here, and he's already got friends in the 7th grade, and he's gonna do soccer, etc. etc. I smile and nod and give the standard, yeah, dude that's super cool, to keep the conversation going. My uncle tries to redirect the conversation to put focus on him, cause I'm not trying to get hit on by a kid. Kid's not taking the bait though. He hits me with his smoothest, so what grade are you starting? My uncle loses IT. He manages to stop laughing long enough to go, yeah, OP, what grade are you starting? Me, I'm actually a teacher. The kid immediately turns red as a tomato, my uncle is laughing even harder now. Kid, mortified, tell you what grade do you teach? Me, preschool. He gave the biggest sigh of relief, and my uncle again starts laughing again. The rest of the summer, my uncle would razz me about what grade are you starting until I was getting on the plane to my new job in Spain. Sorry kiddo, I won't get to hang with your cool seventh grade friends. I do work here. If you enjoyed the video, Please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.